Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. And I'm Sam Healy. And there's gold in them there hills. Carcassonne Gold Rush. This is the second Carcassonne in the Around the World series, which who knows how long the series will be. Yeah, it could go on for a very long time. Carcassonne is a game that's very popular. It came out um, over 15 years ago. It is still going strong. Yep. There are many, many, many variations. I say there's at least eight different versions of Carcassonne out there. This is the newest one. Mm -hmm. It's different than Carcassonne, but if you already know how to play Carcassonne, I could probably teach you this really quickly. Just what's the difference in rules. If you've never played Carcassonne before, you don't have to worry because this is, this is easy enough to learn from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Is it worth owning? Let's explore. this game is to get the most points. Players will be keeping track of their points over here using this tracker uh, and you're going to be getting points simply on your turn by taking a tile from the top of a stack and then placing that tile so it connects to a tile that's already out on the board and then taking an action. Now when you put out these tiles they have to connect so you can see this train track connects there. Uh, perhaps I could put this uh, mountain range here that connects with that mountain range. If I have some planes here I could attach them like this. Uh, if I have a town, which is one of the things here, I could attach it here, but not here because the train track would go, there's no train track on that side. So you have to follow some rules when placing them, although you can rotate them in different directions. When you play a mountain tile, you have to draw a token and place it there for each gold nuggets that is shown. Now these tokens on the other side of them will either have one, two, three, or five gold nuggets or nothing. Now there's mostly twos and threes in the mix. There's only a few fives and there's only a few of the uh, gravel, which is worth nothing. But you will be drawing these tiles and placing them. Now, after you place a tile, you have three different options. One, you can place your guy on that tile. Now when you place him on the tile that you place, let's say this is the tile I placed. I have three spots that I can put him. I can put him on the train track itself, or I could put him in this prairie, or in this prairie. I cannot put him on something that someone else is already on. So let's say that the red player is here on this train track. I cannot put the, if I put this down here, I cannot put the yellow guy on this train track. Although I could put him on this one, this one, or this one, or I could put him in the ghost town. Let's say red player was in the mountain there. I cannot put my yellow player in the mountain because he's already there. It's still possible for two people to be in the same area. For example, if a yellow player is there, and a red player is here, and then later on someone plays something that connects them, they're both in the same area. Now you want to put your people in these areas because that's how you score points. If you have a train track and that train track finishes, let's say here this train track stops at this junction here, and it stops at this junction here. So if I had a guy on this track, I'd get one, two, three points, one for each tile, and I would take the guy back. Here, I'm going to get double points because there is a train on that tile. So one train will double all the points, although if there are two trains in the same track, which as we know in old western movies is always a bad thing, it's back down to one point per tile. A town has three or four junctions that are coming out of it for train tracks. When they are all finished, so this one's finished, but this one and this one and this one are not finished yet, when they're all finished you'll score three points for each junction. And then the mining areas, when one of those finishes, you will get to take all these tokens that are on it. So let's say uh, someone finished this one here like this. I would get all the tokens that are on it, keep those for end of game scoring secretly, but I would also score a point for each gold nugget that is in that mountain range. These guys who are in the prairies, they don't score until the end of the game, but when they do, you look in the prairie and for every group of TPs, you get two points and for every group of wild horses, you get four. So placing a guy is one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is you can place your tent. 
and the tent goes in a mountain and it has to be placed where there's no other tent or no other guy in that spot. But you can go to a spot where somebody else is uh, in the same mountain range, just not in the same spot. And then on a future turn, you can take one of these and keep it for yourself. You're basically mining off someone else's claim. Now, when the whole thing is finished, your tent goes away and whoever has a miner in it gets everything. But before it's finished, let's say someone decided to continue it like this and it's still out there, there's still stuff there. I can send my tent and start mining, uh, although that takes an action. And I can't place a guy out here when I do so. This will continue until all tiles have been played. And there are quite a few tiles in the game, so it'll look really nice. There'll be a big cities and things connected at the end. When the last tile is played, you will score one point for each railroad. You'll score points for each finished connection in the town. You'll score points for the mountains for the gold nuggets, but you don't get to keep these. And then everyone will re and then you score the prairies. And then everyone reveals all their gold nuggets and adds those points to their score over here. And whoever has the most points is the winner. All right, Carcassonne Gold Rush. Let's talk about the theme. The theme is about the gold rush, the Western gold rush. Does that yes. does that work? Yeah, it works. Uh, I think that uh, the, I mean, it, it's got a lot of different aspects of, of the gold rush in it. It's got the, you know, staking your own claim. It's got the claim jumpers that can come in and steal your gold while you're looking the other direction. Um, it's got the different cities uh, and all of the cities that were in there, you know, Carson City and uh, I'm drawing a blank now, but you, you get what I mean. It has all Just of think those. of different games. Right. Deadwood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I think, yeah, the theme the theme is pretty good. The theme the theme is um, stuck rather well to this to this game. And I compared it to Carcassonne, and it's very similar. Okay, the biggest changes in this from Carcassonne is, um, well, the, let's start with some small changes. The prairies are very similar to farms. Actually, mm -hmm. the prairies in this game are very similar to Carcassonne Hunters and Gatherers, yeah. would, um, it, they're really easy to count. You're like, oh, this was 2, two 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can get a lot of points if you play those prairies, yes, right? you can. Um, and or the you the you the, play it right. <laughs> the train tracks are pretty easy. The one train on a track is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. If someone has a really long track with one train, you might drop another train in there just to make it go down to one point each. Yep. Um, and then, then there's the claim jumping. That's the biggest change in the game. The idea that if you finish a mountain, you really can get a, a lot of pile points. of points, or you can get some points, but if you wait too long, the, you know, you build this big mountain, and what can someone do? People start sucking it away from you. <laughs> they do. And that gives you another option. There's actually fewer people. You each have five dudes, and one of them's on a scoring track, so you only have four guys. That's problematic. Really makes you think. And it can really catch you too. Yep. Putting a guy into a prairie, you have to think twice, yep. three times before doing it. Because if you put a guy in a prairie and it only gets you like two to, I would say you need at least 10 points yep. or it's not worth it because you could have been putting it out and putting it back. There was a one point in one game where you were, yep. you had no one to put out, right? Could not, I, because one guy was stuck in a prairie that was only going to score two points and I could not uh relinquish that that guy and that was really hurting me because i i probably had to give up anywhere from five to ten points because that one guy was stuck getting only two so you really have to be careful now there is some some counter that you can go and do the claim jumping yep. and i like that that claim jumping is there and and it's very thematic it's like i'm coming in um the only thing i could see that could be negative about this is i think some people can well they will complain about the the, the gold tiles themselves uh -huh. you really could get shafted if you yeah. draw a pile and there are i think there's 10 it's like 10 that are nothing 10 that have won 20 that have two something like that so there's mm -hmm. most of them have gold yeah there's only like three or four to have five gold right. but if you get like four or five of the ones that are zeros that can really put you behind someone who got like a five yeah <laughs> for example very true. So there is some randomness. Yeah, there is. And uh, along with that randomness, I think if, uh, and I, I've, I've said this to Tom, I think the cities, if you don't get a cities, you can, you can be behind just, just because you didn't draw the right, draw the right tile. Uh, cities are, are, are done uh, very much like the, uh, oh, what were they called? Cloisters. The cloisters in the other game where you, you get nine points for finishing off 
the tiles around your city. Uh, but actually this time it's the railroads. Uh, every time the railroads finish, and that can be problematic because if those railroads continue to go and they never finish, your city never scores. Um, but there's only at most, I think, two or three uh, leading off of each city tile. I don't think any of them have four. Maybe one of them does, but I don't remember. No, some have four. Some do? Okay. Well, any, at any rate, if you keep drawing those tiles, you can just, like cloisters, you can just put them right next to each other. And the railroads finish that way. So, I don't know. I think that's more of the randomness, uh, luck of the draw aspect. It's just a lucky thing that can happen. But if you don't get any cities, uh, you could find yourself behind pretty, pretty significantly. I really love the visual look of the game. The train tracks going around with the trains, mm -hmm. I like that. The, the little teepees are very brightly colored. It just has a good look. Carcassons always look good anyway. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought this one was good. So my final score on this one is one uh, gold uh, pickaxe up, one pickaxe up. I, I like the game. I don't love it. Um, and in the same breath, where do I place it in the Carcassonne genre? Okay. Huh. I still like Carcassonne the city and Carcassonne the best out of the, out of the series. I like Carcassonne the Discovery, which is the first one around the world. I think I like this one better than that one because I like the theming better. <laughs> Carcassonne to Discovery was a, a kind of a radical difference to Carcassonne. Yeah. And I liked it. It was a good change. This is a personal preference for me. I'm not saying this is a better game than the, the South Seas. I just like the theming better. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, one gold donkey tooth up. It's right there. And, uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I... Uh, I like South Seas better than this, and I didn't like Discovery at all. Uh, so this is kind of in the middle so far, as far as their new Around the World series is going. Um, I would probably rather play this over, you know, the epic Carcassonne, where you have like 1,500 rules that you have to keep track of. Um, <laughs> I would rather play this than regular Carcassonne, uh, but I would rather play South Seas over this. So... Uh, I'll, but it is it is a good implementation of the Carcassonne system, so I'll give it one golden donkey tooth up. And I will say one last thing is that if you are new to the whole thing and you've never played any of the Carcassonne games, you could play this easily and have fun. Yeah. This would be a fine entry point. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for expansions, then you better go buy original Carcassonne. But if you don't care about that, solid game. You have fun. It's less than an hour. And entertaining. Yeah, the Around the World series is actually a pretty cool, cool idea for Carcassonne because if you don't want to go the route of buying the base game and buying all of those expansions, you can pick these guys up uh, for, you know, really next to nothing. What, 30 bucks? 30, 40 bucks maybe, depending on where you get it from. And they're really, there's a lot of fun, fun packed into those games. So um, I, I'd, I'd at least give it a favorable look if I were you. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>